In this video, I'm going to be going over my approach to search engine optimization SEO as a developer. Over the past three to four years, I've built a lot of different apps, mobile apps, web apps, you name it. And primarily my marketing channel has been organic social media posts like TikTok, Instagram Reels and YouTube videos. But recently I've been investing a lot more time and energy into search engine optimization because when you think about what SEO is, it's like free traffic to your website. So in this video, I'm going to be going over why I decided to invest more into search engine optimization and how I approach search engine optimization as a developer. But before we get into the real potatoes of the video, in case you don't know what search engine optimization is, search engine optimization SEO is basically the game of figuring out how to get your website for your product ranked really highly. And this is really advantageous because Google processes tons of queries per day. I think like hundreds of millions, if not billions of queries every single day. And if you can somehow make sure that your website comes up to the very top for searching queries, you're going to get a lot of free organic traffic that way. And now with the introduction of LLMs, not only is there search engine optimization, but now there's a concept of LLM optimization. I don't know how it works, but probably pretty similar. Now, first, let's cover why am I investing more into SEO, when, especially in the day and age where LLMs are going to be the next future. It's going to replace search engines. You know, Google's going to die because of LLM. And you know, maybe you're right. Search engines might actually die out in the future with LLMs replacing them. But for the time being, there are still hundreds of millions, if not billions of searches being done on Google and every other search engine out there. So for the time being, I still think there's valuable real estate to be had there. And earlier in this video, I also mentioned that my primary form of marketing has been social media marketing. But the only downside of social media marketing is the fact that you constantly have to pump out new content because the life of a video is relatively short. Usually within like a week, it'll reach like peak viewership and kind of not get served in the algorithm anymore. After that, you know, just due to relevance, you squeezed out all the juice you possibly could from that video. And the only way you can get more people to learn about your product is by making more and more videos, which is very important still. Don't get me wrong. But SEO is a little bit more evergreen in my mind. You know, how often do blog posts or how often do certain web pages and search results really go like out of date? I think that lifespan of a website, a web page, a blog post, whatever your SEO strategy is, it's a lot longer on SEO than it is compared to a social media video served on TikTok or Reels. So I think actually having both of these two strategies of SEO as well as social media marketing combined together is really beneficial because actually I think as more and more people visit your product and find out about your product from social media, they will also then in turn Google your product on Google and and other search engines. So your SEO will also get a little boost there. So I think they're actually very symbiotic and can actually build off of each other a lot. And that's the primary reason why I wanted to invest more into SEO. People are already searching the products that I'm building via social media marketing. And I want to capture some of that traffic and get even more traffic and get more evergreen organic traffic via search that is not as accessible through video. And now let's talk about what exactly is my SEO strategy. But before we get into that, I do want to do a quick little plug. I do offer some one on one consulting services for people that want some technical advice on how to build your app as well as marketing advice on how to grow and market your app. You can book some time with me at youraveragetechpro.com. And I also launched a YouTube membership program where if you want to join a Discord server where you can chat with me and hopefully other builders that join the membership as well, just chat casually, get some casual advice here and there. And who knows, maybe some members only live streams, members only Q&A and videos, tips and tricks. So if you're interested in joining that Discord server, connecting with other builders and also supporting your boy over here, then make sure to join that YouTube membership down below. All right, back to the video. In terms of my actual SEO strategy, I want to start off by saying I'm not an SEO expert. I'm still figuring out the ropes, figuring out how exactly to do it well. But I do think I have a strategy that works because lately I've been averaging around five to 6,000 visitors per month on my website, which is not a lot, but it's not nothing either. And I, my approach to SEO is much more programmatic and developer focused compared to other people that do more like outreaching, getting backlinks from other blogs, other reputable blogs and stuff like that. Now, my current approach to SEO is programmatic SEO. Now, let me show you what exactly exactly programmatic SEO is by going over to my desktop and doing a little bit of screen sharing. All right, so now let me quickly walk you through what exactly programmatic SEO, PSEO for short is. So I actually had a hard time finding a definition for this. So let's just go with what Google says right here. Programmatic SEO is the process of automatically generating thousands of web pages with the same goal of ranking on Google. Now let me show you what a real life example of that looks like. Let's take all trails, for example, which is a website that lets people in the US find different hiking and backpacking trails. And they basically have a gigantic gigantic database of thousands and thousands of parks and trails and paths all stored within their website. And if you look at the results here, this is one result, you know, Vernal and Nevada Falls. Cool. It has certain information about it, certain screenshots. It has a very strict template that it follows, right? You see this all here. This is kind of annoying, but basically you get the gist of what I'm saying. Not necessarily a blog post, which is what people typically think of when they think of SEO. Instead, this is just a template to visualize and show data. Because then if we go to this other park, literally you can see it's 
the same exact format, the data just changes. Upper Yosemite Falls Trail, yeah, the different, you know, has a slightly different copy, not all that different, but even this is probably templated data as well. You have the length, elevation game, estimated time, out and back, same here, same for Half Dome, another trail, same for Vernal Falls Trail as well. So essentially what they're doing is they're creating a template that they can then shove a bunch of data into that will all render the same web page, but with different data across their entire website. So this is really helpful. For example, if you have like all trails example, it's really useful for them because they probably have hundreds of thousands of different trails. And now they automatically have hundreds of thousands of different web pages all across Google. Now with traditional SEO strategy, it's typically about ranking super high on a query that gets a ton of search volume. And with traditional SEO, that kind of makes sense because writing a blog post isn't easy. It takes a decent amount of time. You want to make sure all that time and energy and effort you put into creating that one blog post, you want to make sure it ranks pretty high. But if we look at the programmatic SEO approach, it actually doesn't require any blog post writing. The hard part is actually just generating the data and formatting it in like a certain format or a template to store it all. But once you scrape all the data, then you automatically have thousands of web pages available for users. So the strategy of PSEO instead of traditional SEO is that you go for long tail keywords, essentially keywords that don't necessarily have really high search volume, but are very niche, very specific. And then ideally keywords that will increase the chances that somebody visiting that blog post or programmatic SEO page that you built will then be like, wow, this is super useful. Let me wait, what website exactly is this? Then they go check out your actual website and hopefully convert to a user or a paid customer. I mean, I don't know how many people are going to look up Vernal Falls right here, right? Let's say only 10 people visit this every single month. It's probably more than that, but just as an example, let's just say 10 people visit this website per year. That's not that much, right? In the traditional SEO strategy, that's not useful. But if you have hundreds of thousands of these pages, because you just have a gigantic database of all of your hiking trails, you get 100,000 pages times 10 visitors per month. That is 1 million visitors per month to your website. Whew, no public math, but your boy just did it. Pat myself on the back for that one. So that's the big strategy with programmatic SEO. You generate tons of pages programmatically. And sure, they might not all get a ton of clicks, maybe only 10, 5, 20 clicks. But if your database is large enough, you will get a ton of clicks on your website. So that is what programmatic SEO is. It's actually very little SEO writing involved, and it's way more programmatic instead. Now, let me show you my example for Perfect Interview. This is the website that I'm building, perfectinterview.ai. Quick plug if you want to check it out. We have a resume builder. We have three different tools in our website, which is number one, a resume builder. You can do like chat to resume, a very AI native way to build resumes. Interview prepping software, where we generate practice interview questions for you. And you can also do mock interviews with our AI assistant. And then we also have the interview co-pilot tool, which is a tool that listens in on your interview, transcribes everything, detects questions that are being asked and answers questions in your interview in real time. So that's a tool that I'm building. So as you can see, it's very job recruiting, getting a job focused. So our programmatic SEO strategy is twofold. Let me show you the performance of the website. So this is the current performance of Perfect Interviews SEO strategy. As you can see, we're getting 6,000 clicks a month with 94,000 impressions a month as well. Obviously, nothing crazy. It's not incredible, but it's not nothing either. It's some decent performance. Now, our programmatic SEO strategy, there are two components to it. Number one is mock interview question generation. So if you go over here, you see we have a blog about payment posting representative practice interview questions. Now, if we go to visit the page, we see that we have some type of job listing. This one, a payment posting representative. We have practice interview questions, and we just list out three practice interview questions and provide some answer guidelines, as well as some sample answers of what would make a good answer versus what would make a bad answer. And then as you go through this, a user reads through all these. Then I believe right here. Oh, actually right here. Then we also have the option for a user to click practice these interview questions, generate way more practice interview questions, which actually is built off of the back of this feature right here, the interview prep. We already generate practice interview questions. And in this programmatic SEO strategy, we offer them for free. And if users want to practice these questions themselves, they click on practice these interview questions. And then we put them through a UI flow to make an account, clone these questions into their account and practice with them and hopefully become a paid user to get more access for it. The way that we do this is we actually just scrape hundreds and thousands of different job postings. I think we do like a hundred a week is our typical rate right now. And we scrape tons of job postings and then we rely on AI to generate these practice interview questions for us, as well as answer guidelines, as well as examples of good answers. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking, you're gonna be like, wait a minute, this is AI slop, like Google hates AI slop. Now, here's the thing, in this day and age, I don't think AI is going away. AI is gonna become more and more prevalent than ever before. And at the end of the day, I don't think it matters whether something is written by AI or not. What really matters in terms of Google for searching, this is just my like tinfoil hat going on, is the result helpful? Is it useful? Users who visit your page enjoy the content 
content that they're seeing. So in this case, where we are repeating this strategy across so many different job postings and so many different roles that we're finding on the internet, oftentimes these queries, these searches don't have any questions or practice questions to begin with. They're not like software engineering or investment banking that have really strong like job recruiting ecosystems and interview prepping ecosystems. These people don't have anything. So this is the best option that they have because previously they had nothing. At this point in 2025, LLMs generate really good content actually. Now, I think they fall short when they're generating like huge blog posts. I think always kind of detect the tone of whether or not something is AI written or not. But in this case, these are really short blobs, really punchy, short, concise questions, sample answers, as well as answer guidelines. And I think in these shorter paragraphs of text, it's a lot easier to generate really good content. I personally think that AI starts to hallucinate a little bit more and lose its efficacy when you start generating a lot of content and have a lot of output tokens. So we've essentially done this across hundreds, uh, maybe like low thousands, mid thousands of job postings. And we just have tons of different blog posts for various different roles that we generate practice interview questions for. And honestly, the interview questions are pretty good because AI and LLMs are super powerful these days. So that's strategy number one. But now we're also using another strategy for SEO, programmatic SEO, which is based off of our resume builder tool. So we recently added this, so it's still pretty early. But now similar to how we were building off of the back of our interview question, our interview prep tool that we built in house, we're also building an SEO strategy around our resume building tool that we have as well. So we take those same exact job descriptions that we had in the previous blog post that we were showing the practice questions for various job posts, because we already had that data in hand, essentially took that same job description and generated a sample resume for users to check out here. So you can see this is some random job listing that we had a reservations agent at Sonesta Hotels sample resume, we just use our resume building software to create this resume, the same type of pipeline. And then here we offer users a little CTA, a call to action being like, Hey, ready to create your own resume here to do so. And then of course, down here, we just have some additional copies some additional text explaining what makes a resume good, how should you format it, yada, yada, yada. And that's our approach with the resume approach. You know, once again, we are using this gigantic database that we already have similar to how all trails does. And we're just visualizing the data in two separate ways, one being a resume and other being practice questions and how to answer these certain practice questions. You know, still, it's pretty early. And I think programmatic SEO is one of those things that it takes time and SEO in general is one of those things that takes time to grow and compound a lot. So we're doing this now we've been doing this for the past three months or so as you can see two months or so and you can see slowly and slowly like the clicks and the impressions they're growing and growing and growing you know who knows hopefully this continues to go we've seen some success right now and i think as we get more and more pages out there sure these pages are only going to get five clicks ten clicks a month but if you have ten thousand pages that's like a hundred thousand clicks fifty thousand clicks per month that you're getting for free to your website and also i think what's really important with this strategy is the fact that they are pretty specific enough that you know you can kind of assume when people come and visit your website or this website specifically for perfect interview where they're trying to look for a sample resume, look for practice interview questions. They're relatively high intent users who have a pretty decent chance of signing up for your service and potentially even becoming a paid customer. So I think that's also a really key aspect if you want to go with this programmatic SEO strategy. It's one thing just to create a ton of pages on the internet and you know they might be of interest to your eventual target demographic. But I think you want to get them low enough like the user acquisition funnel such that they're high intent customers who might actually sign up for your product as well. Like an example of a high like keyword strategy, for example, one programmatic SEO strategy that we thought about was doing a dictionary of corporate lingo and like corporate sayings, you know, like don't boil the whole ocean, that stuff like that. And sure, that's in the same general ballpark of our end user people that like want to get a job, there's a high chance that people that want to get a job will want to learn about these different corporate lingo and corporate slang. The thing is, just because someone's interested on what a certain piece of corporate slang means, they're not always going to be pretty high intent to want to become a converting user, use your software and maybe even become a paying user. So I think this programmatic SEO strategy is really powerful, specifically when you can find a keyword or a data pattern, a keyword pattern that is very high intent for a user who visits your website. So that is my current SEO strategy. It's largely based off of programmatic SEO. So far, we've seen some decent performance and hoping that it gets better. As you can see, you know, what is it? Month over month, we get 3K clicks a month, actually not 6K, it's 6K over three months. So I think we're growing, hopefully continues to work. I'll give another update in the next coming months if we see any good performance or worse performance as well. And that's about all I had to say for this video. Let me know if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below in the comments down below and I'll do my best to reply to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.